For the last half century, an elite organization called the Bilderberg Group has met annually all around the world in total secrecy, behind closed doors and with no official press coverage. And this year they're meeting in the wealthy city of Chantilly, Virginia, right next to Washington, D.C. They chose I have John no Edwards. idea what that is. If I could just tell you, it's the meeting of the most influential people in the world. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I have no idea what it is. So it's not. Some of the most notable attendees have been Ben Bernanke, Bill Clinton, Timothy Geithner, Bill Gates, Tony Blair, and Colin Powell. Others include Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, Prince Charles, George Soros, and Alan Greenspan. Have you guys heard of it, and will you guys cover the Bilderberg Group? No. Thank you. Next question. It's in secret locations every year. This That's year it was lie. in Switzerland. People are lying to you. That I attended is a the lie. meeting in Switzerland no, you and didn't. covered it. This is Ogrodowski in St. Mort, Switzerland, covering the Bilderberg Group, and things are getting pretty ridiculous here. The U.S., British, and Israeli intelligence protect these elites, and they have teamed up with the Swiss police and military to cordon off this entire area to make sure nobody from the outside gets a glimpse of what's happening inside here. They actually even built a special wall to make sure no photographers document the trees of individuals who are not only afraid of their shadows, but don't want to be documented coming into this private meeting. Not only did they try to arrest me for filming here, the police have also blocked off an entire public street, set up more walls, arrested two people, called in a bomb threat, and are now confiscating people's video cameras. If these banksters, corporate heads, media moguls, heads of state, kings and queens aren't doing anything sinister, why are they protecting this place like Fort Knox, and why are the people here who are trying to find out what's going on being treated like criminals? And they touch my balls and all the things, you know, uh, really nice. They can't, it, it's closed, they, they said. Yes, I asked why, and they said we can't give any information. That's all we know from the police. And I said we have a hotel room up there. And then they said, yeah, there, there's nothing he can do. It's, it's not okay that they close down this, this route. It's an official route. I called the police, they told me it's official, it's not private, it's, it's illegal what they are doing here. It's illegal, it's my own mini hair, it's an öffentliche Straße. Being filed by the cops, or it's probably just random, <laughs> most likely random. <laughs> we were going to make it look like it's a conspiracy on our YouTube channel. Look how dangerous we are, the cops are following us, look at this. So. We're still being followed by the cops, which means my first premonitions are correct. I was right. So what is really going on in these meetings? Well, all weekend I'll be in Chantilly, Virginia, covering the Bilderberg Group. Every year, about 130 of the world's most powerful elite players in banking, mining, oil, food, media, and defense and politics meet in secret behind closed doors without any official press coverage. By the way, where's the Bilderberg press release? We're waiting for an official statement from the Bilderberg Group, and so far we haven't got it. There's no press releases. There's no official attendee um, press release out there. So no one really knows who it is that attends or what they're talking about. It is violation of federal law. The Logan Act to be specific. Get 10 bucks for the first cop who can tell me what the Logan Act is. There's, a, there's an act called the Logan Act, which says that you cannot meet with foreign diplomats without congressional oversight. Um, it says that any citizen of the United States without authority of the U.S. carries on any correspondence or intercourse with a foreign government or any officer or agent thereof with intent to influence the measures or conduct of any foreign government or to defeat the measures of the U.S. shall be fined or imprisoned not more than three years. So that's what the majority of people seem to be saying out there, Liz, is that this is that, you know, they think that the State Department has been bought out by lobbyists, foreign diplomats, and corporations, really, who are making the decisions that affect everyone. When you're discussing foreign policy, you're, you're talking about manipulating the prices of oil, the price of uh, gold. Uh, when you're trying to select presidents and prime ministers and these sorts of things, it has to be done 
in secret because these are the things that the people are not necessarily uh, for. Good works are done in light, so what's done in darkness needs to be brought to light. And something like this, like the Bilderberg meeting, should be exposed, and it's up to us, uh, citizen media, to be out here and expose this. While Bilderberg attendees were questioned by independent journalists about what really goes on there, they completely skirt the issue or even deny having attended in some instances. What was your business meeting at the Bilderberg meeting, and how come there's no press there? Can you please answer that question, sir? No, I just had, want to talk about Bilderberg. That's you should ask the Bilderberg people. But you attended the Bilderberg yourself, sir. I did. How do you think being a part of the Bohemian Grove and Bilderberg Group has affected uh, you being chairman as, of the Fed? Bohemian Grove? I was never a member of the Bohemian Grove. It says you attended, but the Bilderberg Group? He, he's, but, but what happened at the Bilderberg meetings? I, I so would, I, I, I classify this as being uh, <laughs> I think I, I vaguely recall I, I went to one. I'm not a member of the Bilderberg Group. I'm not a member of the Bohemian Grove. Those, those are membership you know, organizations. Guys. Sometimes uh, they just straight up lie. Sometimes they catch themselves in lying. And, and it's very interesting. It's very telling. I mean, people can make up their own minds. When you see a Bilderberg member being confronted by uh, a journalist about what they did here, uh, the reaction is very telling. Hey, Mr. Kissinger, what are you going to be doing at uh, Bilderberg this year in Switzerland? What am I going to do in Bilderberg? Bilderberg yeah, in Switzerland this year. What happens there? Well, the discussion of various topics. Mr. Kissinger, we're going to go this way. And what these people say when they're confronted by independent journalists, you know, what was said there, what do you guys do there? They just say, oh, well, we just meet and talk. The problem about that is, I mean, when do 130 of the world's most powerful people just get together and just talk and have beers? I mean, there's, they talk about policy and they talk about things that affect the entire world. Our news organization actually ran into Bill Clinton uh -huh. and he said, you invited him to the 1991 Bilderberg group yeah, meeting. Yeah, I did. I mean, there's no press coverage. You have international elites and banking, yeah. media, corporations, and press meeting in secret. And yeah. everybody calls it a conspiracy, and it never happened. Well, it's not it a does. conspiracy. I've been going since yeah. 1969. What happens then? We have a discussion. There's an agenda, and yeah. we discuss it. Barack Obama and we put came. out a report. And why is there no press coverage of something so important? Because we don't, we don't want any press coverage. We don't, we don't have to have press coverage. Um, so the evidence really is the policies that we see after these meetings being implemented. And you just have to look at the people who are involved and what comes out of it. And you saw in 2008 um, when Obama infamously kind of skirted his press corps, which is with him 24-7, onto another plane and um, said that he was going to be meeting with Hillary in Virginia. Robert, why were we not told about this meeting and that the senator wouldn't be on our flight until the doors were shut? And we were about to taxi to take off. Again, uh, 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 you know, uh, we had a desire. Senator Obama had a desire to do some meetings. Others had a desire to meet with him tonight in a private way, and that's what we're doing. So who made the decision that we were going to leave in a separate plane? Who was who was the person? I mean, who do we complain to? I, that guy looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> completely unprecedented behavior when the press is supposed to be with you 24 7 so completely tricking his press to go on a separate plane to an undisclosed location in virginia with hillary at meetings all weekend um it was pretty obvious that it was bilderberg and you know it came out later that you know hillary got this high level cabinet position just days after but it's a consolidation of power when the secret it entities between the it military the banking the corporations the government the military meet in secret stop. once a year oh. the most powerful people in the world oh, 15 it. members each year oh, stop it someone was telling me that they went into inside the Marriott days before the actual conference and there was like 120 desks in a circle with their own individual microphones like a UN meeting. I mean, you're telling me that these people don't discuss policy and plan agenda. I mean, in their official website, they talk about things that they're going to pursue, uh, how to, you know, talk about the, the evolution of democracy, democracy across the world, cyber terrorism. I mean, these things we know 
there's going to be agenda that comes out of them. What else would they be doing there? And why is it so secret? Uh, the world is simpler. I, I believe the world is simpler than you think. And the things that you don't like in the world are usually explained by stupidity. And even um, Senator Wyden proposed, he, he's the chair of this trade uh, organization in the Senate, and he's talking about why is Obama not letting us see what you guys are talking about, the negotiations that are happening in the TPP. This is completely secret. And I'm the head of this chair on trade, and you're not even letting me see what it is you guys are discussing with these 200 corporate advisors, everywhere from pharmaceuticals to, to banking. But I, we no. are not smart enough <clears throat> as a society or as an elite to come up with the kinds of conspiracies that can work. There are leaks, there are moles inside Bilderberg every year that kind of put out um, things that were talked about, even though they're sworn to secrecy, media moguls who go there are sworn to secrecy, but things do come out. We've just gotten this huge data leak from the 1966 meeting, and it's clear, I've been looking over these documents for the past four or five days now, they were deciding on the future of NATO. They were deciding on how to plan economies. They were deciding what countries and, and uh, what quotas they'd be able to send their exports. They'd decide how to put strings on developing countries and how to try to control the population. You know things I know nothing about. I can't okay. disagree with you because you know secrets. What? Are you curious to go look into the, no. the things he's brought up? Why no. I'm way too lazy to do that. It's really just, I mean, it's just all laid out right in front of you. It's its not a conspiracy. It's just the way it is. You can look at who's donating to these people, and that's really who's putting them in office and who they pay favors to. Mark Dice is ready. He has the tax return that look he found this. of the Bilderberg Group. $655,000 they were given in 2008. Wow. And it lists who gave them what. The Washington Post gives the Bilderberg Group $25,000 in one year. We got Kissinger, Kissinger Rockefeller, grand, David Rockefeller, Wolfenstein, grand, Microsoft, seventy-five grand. Some of these people I don't know. Wall who they Street are. Journal, Jenny Zolin Foundation, twenty-five grand. Coca-Cola. Right I mean, really a worthless company. Yeah, yeah. we oh, actually couldn't grand. print it. Yeah, only gave them ten grand in two thousand eight. The Ripplewood Foundation, whoever they are, but they're located in Rockefeller Plaza. <laughs> One Rockefeller Plaza, whoever the Ripplewood Foundation is, gave them 75 grand. Goldman Sachs, $25,000. Do you think that Goldman Sachs should offer them a little bit more money than 25 grand? <laughs> That's our money. All right, Charlie, why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here today? Well, I'm here uh, in my capacity as a journalist, um, covering it for the, this event for the London Guardian. I remember you were sent down here, uh, what, like two or three years ago to Bilderberg for the first time? Yeah, 2009. Four? And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I, I thought it'd be funny, you know. I, I came, I said, you know, this, no one covers this, maybe I should go along and maybe it'll be a laugh. And it turned into an absolute nightmare. And I was just chased, I was hounded out of the brilliant meeting. Whoop, there, there goes Joseph Ackerman of Deutsche Bank. Um, is that true? No. Is that what it is? <laughs> It's the world's most powerful lobby group. They're so powerful that the politicians come to them. Usually lobby groups meet in the lobby of, you know, uh, government buildings. Right? They're called lobbyists, but this lobby group is so powerful that politicians come to them. This is what we're reduced to. I mean, it's just trying to catch glimpses of people in, uh, you know, hiding behind the Financial Times in the back of their limo, which is, it's not great. You know, we went, we just drove up to the um, security now and said, can we speak to the to the, you know, we're members of the press, we showed our press cards and said, can we speak to the, um, can you show us to the press centre? And, uh, yeah, no, there's no press centre, can, well, can we speak to, a, a, you know, someone, uh, someone who could represent the, the organisation to the press? No, that's not available. They're re resolutely failing to um, nurture any kind of proper and, and grown-up uh, relationship with the press, which is just kind of lame. Let's start with the rest of them! Can you expand on your quote when you said military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy? I never so, said that. Bob Woodward? Bob Woodward said you said that. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Bob Woodward never tell. Nancy, yeah. which way do you want he's to what, He's the guy who yeah, covered Watergate. Yeah, that, he's a trusted that journalist. It doesn't exist. You never said that? Your greatest accomplishments have caused a lot of sir, human please, suffering. Please, sir. Do you have any regret or remorse for the human suffering, Mr. Kissinger, that you caused millions of people in Chile and Argentina and East Timor? 
much. He's not remorseful at all. He's been responsible. He was responsible for some eight million deaths in Indochina, in uh, Vietnam, South, North, uh, Cambodia, and Laos. He's probably the most prominent unindicted war criminal roaming around today. The overthrow and murder of Salvador Allende in Chile, the uh, Kissinger's uh, prompting of the creation of Operation Condor and Plan Mercurio, which uh, saw uh, uh, people being disappeared and kidnapped from various uh, Latin American countries, leftist uh, activists. Uh, he's very arrogant when it comes to his uh, role in history. Uh, there's a number of investigations around the world of, of his war crimes, including in places like Chile. They'd love to get him on the stand. And we see the war bleeding from Afghanistan to Pakistan, just like we saw Kissinger authorize the war to bleed over into Cambodia. And we know uh, the, the terrible results of that uh, bringing to power eventually Pol Pot and, and the Cambodian killing fields. How do you guys feel knowing you just allowed a war criminal inside the Westfield Marriott? You guys allowed Henry Kissinger, a man who does not give a damn about you, nor you, nor you, you guys just allowed Henry Kissinger to walk right out of the hotel. Imagine the bond, imagine how much money Fairfax County, Virginia would make on Henry Kissinger's bond. <laughs> They'd be millionaires. Yeah, they, they a lot of money. A lot of money, they just let them walk in. Everyone, everyone, move out of the way, here comes the criminal. That was, he says it was Goosby, Austin Goosby. What a surprise. Hey, we are here for the same reason as you. You are here to provide for your families. We are here to fight for the future for our families. This is what I mean. We are one. We all are well intentioned. So please talk to us. There is no reason to treat us as enemies. These people, instead of helping their fellow men, if you guys are just going to stand around and do nothing, please read Rockefeller Foundation documents. Look up Henry Kissinger's writings. Then you'll see why we're out here so adamant for you guys to arrest these people. Are you looking it up, officer? No, don't put your phone away. Take it out and do some research. Are you going to stop here or not? That alone. Select all be fired. Yeah, Select yeah. and jump. Yeah. Looks like his hand is being brought above him. The second arrest happening right now. The second arrest just happened right now. Wow. You got an understanding there, allowing these criminals to do rolling stops. 
We're, we're not doing anything. Rupert Murdoch is a Bilderberger, so you have to understand that we at Fox News just can't cover this. If we do, we're just going to make fun of you guys, call you conspiracy theorists. So again, I'm uh, Mark Dice reporting for Fox News since they wouldn't come here. It's amazing when the corporate media did cover it, you know, as you said, for years they didn't even talk about it. And then when they finally do, they just use that pejorative term. It's a conspiracy theory. There's nothing going on. Well, that's just a that's just a lazy way to shut down dialogue. Um, and it's just really sad because it shuts people's brains down and doesn't make them think. Wow, that person just did a U-turn. That person just did a U-turn. That's illegal. But you guys don't care. Excuse me, officers, this woman did not stop at the stop sign. Don't smile, sir. Do your job. Stop giggling and do your job, officer. You can be an American hero right now. You guys pulled over a bunch of Ron Paul supporters, but you don't pull over a bunch of criminals who murdered people. Oh, that officer doesn't care. He's shrugged his shoulder. Who cares? No. Ma'am, don't worry, you don't have to stop at that stop sign. You can commit the crime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir, the Chevy, don't stop. You can commit the crime. Thank you. Don't stop. Have you got any other responses from the police? Um, no, just stern looks. Officer, you're filming me. Zoom in tightly. Zoom in tightly. This is important. This is important, officer. Zoom in tightly. Get a tight close-up, please. This is breaking news. United States Senator John Kerry and Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels are currently violating the Logan Act by attending the Palm Tree Conference, a.k.a. Bilderberg, at the Westfield Marriott Hotel. Can you please turn around, go inside, and arrest these two immediately? Thank you. Do you think they're concerned this year, Jim, about the amount of exposure, the amount of coverage they're getting? Well, they're outraged. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it used to be just me, and it's gotten, of course, bigger ever since. Would you say that you're yeah. optimistic about the way things are going? Oh, very much so, because they've been losing. We've been... There we go. Oh, like this? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. But it's hard to talk into this and look at your legs at the same time. <laughs> you, put, you, you give me a problem. Well, as a girl watch, I'm in uh, general practice. I'm a breast specialist. <laughs> 1990s, Bilderberg was confident that we'd have the long way toward a new world order by the year 2000, 2002. They were just so confident. Uh, they were bragging to each other about it. And that was 12 years ago. And they've been going uh, downhill ever since with the pressure from the, uh, all types of media. Is it done by somebody? It's Alex, I think. Oh, Alex Jones? Sounds yeah. like Alex, yeah. <laughs> I salute the freedom fighters! We salute the people who know who the enemy is! Long live the Republic and death to the new world order! Freedom! He's so timid, though, if he'd just be more outspoken. <laughs> think that this is America waking up? Is this America fed up? Is this the new media really showing its teeth for the first time? What do you think? Yes, I do. Um, what I'm most encouraged about is the how young people are. I'm uh, 49 and I thought that uh, the younger, younger generation was completely brainwashed, but including my own children. <laughs> but I'm uh, thankfully finding that that's not the case. So uh, I think we've, we've got a lot of hope. I can't tell you how great it is to be out here with everybody. All right, if you had one final message to, to say to everybody out there that may not know what the Bilderberg Group is, why they should be concerned, why these people are out there, what would you tell them? Oh, I'd say that just, just about everybody has to know someone in law enforcement or in government or they're in government or law enforcement themselves. And you need to reach out to those people and let them know that the, the citizens are concerned for good reason and that the gov people in government should be concerned for good reason because we're all going to go to the guillotine, so to speak, um, and we all need to stick together and recognize we're Americans first, and we have a rule of law, we have a constitution, and uh, that's what's most important. It's, it's awesome seeing so many people coming out here to uh, bring attention to what's happening behind these closed doors over here. So a lot of uh, independent media guys here, which is awesome, a lot of great 
people to talk with. I mean, you're out here, Webster Tarpley, Alex Jones, Dan Dix, Jason Burmitz, Mark Dice, Abby Martin, like they almost anybody and everybody in the freedom movement is pretty much uh, Joe Bannister's here. Like it, it's pretty Yeah, insane. Joe Bannister, that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that was really, 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 really cool to see. Yeah, he's awesome. He's a great guy. You could watch live through a live stream on a cell phone exactly what's happening with everybody coming in now and getting the sneak peek and the first hand eye view of, oh crap, it's Henry Kissinger. He's here again. And all these other important people that people are going to be bringing up online, their pictures, their faces, and people will recognize them. And, and uh, just by seeing who's here, you could pretty much see the agenda that's being set. You go there, and it's, the whole thing is an education. I mean, it, it was extraordinary. It's people like you or Webster Tarpley just standing around outside. You know, people that know a lot of stuff, you know, about this. So there's an amazing kind of information sharing. And, you know, we met some really incredible people. As usual, every time we go to Bilderberg, we meet, you know, people who are incredibly switched on, incredibly... Uh, up to speed with their with their global politics and their global history, and you know it's just it's just a it's just a joy to spend time around those people for a week. I urge all your you, you know all your listeners and viewers to just start looking back. A lot of these documents are online, and just start piecing together if they haven't already. You know the links between the foundations and the intelligence services and Bilderberg and, and you know the CIA and, and it go, it's it's a dark place, but it's it's worth looking into. We know Syria is very much on the front burner. There was the head of the Syrian National Council, which is really just a Western front for transition in Syria. And it really looks like they're trying to go to war because we have all kinds of people who attended Bilderberg now writing articles, creating this fake argument of whether we should stick with diplomacy or bomb immediately. We're going to do everything we can to get Iran to strike next. I mean, surrounding them with all sides. Oh, yeah. Um, with our military, the assassination of the scientists, um, this mysterious bombing that took out people. I mean, it's just amazing the fear mongering that's going on with Iran and also now Syria is on the agenda. It's just it's just going to happen where we're just going to be taking out these countries that are last in line. But, you know, Zbigniew Brzezinski used to attend Bilderberg. He stopped after a couple decades. But he used to talk about how in world government, there's, of course, the over-the-table and under-the-table agreements. I think that's really what Bilderberg represents. They're gradually, incrementally moving us to world government, first with things like Carnegie for International Peace, then with the United Nations, and, and ever gradually more binding organizations, NATO. People all know about NATO, but no one's talking about this and what it could possibly do to this country and, and the sovereignty of America. But just the, the fact that they were saying that nationalism is dangerous. I mean, this was from 50 years ago that they're talking about that concept being a danger to whatever it is that they're talking about and discussing. I mean, that's that's definitely troubling. Are you going to be out here doing more RT pieces? Bigger bigger. This is Abby Martin of MediaRoots.org. You can check her out on Abby Martin. She is a great reporter <laughs> for RT. It's very fun to be reporting for a professional organization, even though it is the Russian government. It's very amazing, and everyone there is really great. They don't censor anything I do, and it's kind of interesting, but... It's cool to be out here. It's cool to see so many people out here. Hopefully the crowd grows. Hopefully hundreds will come out here this weekend. It's really important because citizen journalism is really all we have right now. It's truth telling from the ground up. It's raw truth. And they're all just, it's just amazing. I mean, these media moguls, the willful ignorance about the most powerful meeting of the mind that happens every year. And the willful ignorance is just astounding. It's, just, it's, it's a war of the mind, it's a war of the consciousness, it's an evolution of the soul. Mm. And that's why we're all here. And there's so many more of us than anyone realizes. And it's just about putting yourself out there. Find out what your true will is, find out what you're good at. And don't let society tell you otherwise. Don't let society bring you down and don't be scared of the love. Don't be scared. Because reality is a beautiful thing and embracing truth is enlightening. Information is enlightening. Information is power. And it's amazing and it's beautiful. And don't turn yourself off from it. Embrace it. I am very tired. <laughs> sure. Do you want me to hold the rig and then have to do Alright, taking over the live stream for a second for Luke. Wait, I thought you were gonna get up and start Okay, hold on. <laughs> I might actually just do work. This thing's so heavy, you guys. Luke. You don't have to. No no no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking.
Are you doing, you're doing a 12-hour live stream you know, there, marathon for We Are Change. You know, I'm working and I'm fairly educated. Is that, I got college, I got a is that your, your girlfriend with your with your rig back there? Is that... Is that uh, Abby that Media out. Roots? Hold him out. Is that Abby Media Roots filling in? Shush. For Luke shush. Ladowski? Shush, right? Get the cameras out the way. Get the cameras out the way. Did Luke, did Luke not make it 12 hours? Yeah, it is. I blasted. So we need a new structure. Because their charter's up. If we renew the charter, whoever's president renews that charter. Nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here. Keep it moving. Keep moving. Of course, we wouldn't. Thousands of people were tuned in for 12 hour blocks at a time, thousands of people tuning into Luke's live stream, Alex's live stream. So it really is the new media that you see. People care about this. They want to know what's going on. And it was really amazing to see how many people were really tuned in for so long to see this going on. Abby, thank you so much for, for being there and keeping us informed as to what was going on. That was RT correspondent Abby Martin. Thanks for having me.